Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today. We are going to go down to the Spiro Mounds in Oklahoma. And this is a place that I have had a lot of messages on and comments on. So I've been putting this together over the last week or so. But this is the archaeological site. And of course, this is by an elbow in the river, just as many of these other sites are. But this has a lot of history to it, and I have told you from the very beginning these mounds were treated differently in every part of the country. They all have their own unique history, how they were treated. Some were preserved very well. Some were preserved very well later on as time went on. And some were certainly eliminated in disgraceful fashion, but this site around the Spiro Mounds, I was just looking around here for just a bit, but there is some pretty interesting stuff. Sometimes when you're looking on the plains, it's just a wasteland of fields. But this is a pretty interesting uh, area to look at on Google Earth, and you can find some stuff that looks pretty interesting. But this is the Spiro Mounds today. But here is what the Spiro Mounds look like today overhead. A mound here, a main platform mound, all that remains, and then a series of mortuary mounds right here, and then scattered throughout mounds that have really deteriorated. Now here is what the spiral mounds looked like a long time ago. There was these house type structures and there was a earthen flat top pyramid that seemed to be a ceremonial complex here. And then in the distance you see a large mound and three small mounds off of it and that seemed to be the main burial complex and that's where a lot of artifacts were found and when they broke into this really this was a treasure trove of artifacts now the artifacts found in those mortuary mounds i guess is what i'll call them have been called the king tut tomb of the arkansas valley just because of the numerous artifacts found and i'm just going to read a little bit here and this gives a good history of what actually happened to the mounds when they were pretty much destroyed a long time ago and what we see today they're they are kind of rebuilt because these were thoroughly excavated the first owner after statehood rachel brown lived in a cabin near what is known as craig mound she told of mysterious sounds and of blue flames emitted from the mound at night and of mules that were spooked around that structure William Craig inherited the property after Brown's death and kept the curious away. Upon his death, he willed the land to his young grandchildren. Their maternal grandfather, George Evans, saw leasing the land as a way to get money to pay off his mortgage and to treat his grandson's tuberculosis. So 80 years ago, in 1933, in the depths of the Great Depression, a group of six men calling themselves the Pacola Mining Company kicked in $50 each to raise the $300 Evans was asking for a two-year lease to excavate the mound on the Craig property. Descendants of the miners say they believe gold was hidden in the mound stashed by the early Spanish explorers who were traveling the rivers of the interior from Colorado trying to make it to the Mississippi and the sea. The story maintains that gold was buried in a mound near a river along the Indian guides who were killed to keep the secret. They started with picks and shovels. At first, the relics and skeletons the diggers unearthed from the mounds were of little interest. These men were after gold, but curiosity seekers would come by and offer a nickel or a dime for an artifact that caught their eye. As word spread, curious hunters came by the mounds to buy up more of the items. When the word of the cachet of relics reached Forrest Clements at the archaeology department of the University of Oklahoma, he tried to stop the dig. He attempted to buy out the investors. Who were discouraged they weren't hitting pay dirt. He tried to get Evans to rescind the lease. He lobbied the Oklahoma legislature to pass an Antiquities Act to protect the mounds from commercial digs, and there he succeeded. But not everyone agreed with his idea that the past was public property. If at present almost wholly unknown prehistory of Oklahoma is to become a matter of scientific record, the archaeological work must be done by formally trained persons and published in orthodox scientific journals before the relatively few sites have been irretrievably 
ruined. He added a simple assessment in layman's language. Scratching around can never be useful and is always damaging. Four months before the Pecola Mining Company's lease was to expire, the new law allowed Clements to contact the Floor County Sheriff's Office and file a complaint about now illegal digging on Craig Mound. A deputy showed up and told the men they had to stop under threat of arrest. Clements, thrilled that the slow destruction of the mound through shovel and pickaxe had been stopped, headed to California to teach a course. Upon hearing that Clements had left the state, the Pecola Mining Company snuck back to the mound to get as much for its investment as it could. They hired out-of-work miners and decided to speed up their quest to tunnel through the mound center. About 30 feet in, they hit fragments of conch shells engraved with faces and symbols. Accounts tell the miners hauling out the decorated shells by the wheelbarrow and dumping them near the entrance where they were crushed under foot. Eventually, the diggers hit a wall of hard-packed earth 18 inches thick. In his book, Looting Spiral Mounds, historian David Levere tells of the moment of the discovery and waited on the other side. The pick blade broke through into an empty space. Immediately, there was a hissing noise as human Oklahoma summer air rushed into the hollow chamber beyond. The miner's lance revealed one of the most stunning finds in the history of the continent, the largest trove of pre-European contact artifacts north of the Mexican border, sealed in spiral mounds decades before Columbus set foot in America, and probably about 1,500 years, maybe 2,000 years before that time. What followed was a feeding frenzy. There was neither time nor inclination for photographs or sketches to be made of the layout or the holdings in the central tomb. Witnesses tell of beads, pearls, arrowheads that were spilled across the site, feather capes and elaborate weavings trampled, ancient cedar poles burned as firewood, and human bones piled at the edge of the camp where they soon crumbled to dust. The Spiral Mounds treasure made headlines nationwide. The New York Times trumpeted the significance of the relics, inaccurately noting that each item taken from the mound is cataloged and photographed, and careful records are being kept. The Kansas City Star heralded the discovery of a King Tut tomb in the Arkansas Valley. Soon, other LaFleur County mounds came under attack from relic hunters wielding shovels and driving mule team drawn scrapers. With the burial chamber sacked, time running out on their lease, and Clements due back in California, the Pecola Mining Company decided one last action. From Levere's telling, in a fit of spite, just to jab their finger in Clements' eye, they packed the central chamber of the Great Mound with kegs of black powder and touched off a mighty explosion. The blast shattered whatever items remained in the chamber creating a small cave-in and a large crack in the mound. It destroyed the Pecola men's reputation as down-home heroes fighting for their property rights, blowing them instead into the ranks of looters and destroyers. The men were eventually arrested, but there is no record of them serving time. The damage had been done. Now here is what the Craig Mound looks like today, and this is pretty much reconstructed for the park here, but there was one large mound and then three smaller mounds off of it. And this is where the artifacts and the skeletons were found. Here is a pic of what it looked like all torn apart. Now here's just a simple diagram of the large mound and then the three mounds as they were found in their original condition. 112 feet long, the large mound, and then the three mounds together, it looks like about 128 feet total. Why the three mounds off the central mound? The three belt stars of Orion, I'll probably get that comment, but possibly. This main mortuary mound, there was a void with a mortuary chamber in it. These mounds are constructed very well. This is a side angle of what these look like originally. And this is a diagram of what was found. Now here is how the artifacts were laid out in the center of this empty void, this mortuary chamber inside of the main mound. 
here we have an entranceway. Effigy stone pipes and water bottles were found at the entranceway. And here are some of those pipes that and a few of these I featured in that video from last week. But the stone pipes were definitely found in these mounds and they were just a few of the many artifacts that were found. Now this outer circle is described as a mud wall and these were reinforced and maybe they were even burned to give it more strength but it says an altar was found here with blankets and beads were found here. An alligator stone pipe was found near the entrances. 30 copper axes and pearl beads and some of these mounds had just uh, thousands of pearls in them. An altar with blankets and beads was found on this side. In the center, three blankets and 800 pounds of shell beads. 800 pounds of shell beads. Two effigy pipes were found right near the center. Down here, 10 baskets of sheets of copper. 10 baskets, sheets of copper. 20 stone pipes were found here. Projectile points were kind of laid out in a fashion down here. So this was an amazing find when they broke into this. There was artifacts of all different kinds. But a lot of these artifacts, the pearls and the shells and some of the uh, pipes, certainly had stone that was brought in from really hundreds of miles away. The shell beads and the pearls came from God knows how far away, but I find this very interesting. This is probably the greatest treasure trove of artifacts we have coming from a long time ago in the ancient United States. Now let's take a look at some of these artifacts that were found. and They were numerous and they seem to be sold to collectors about 80 years ago. Here are copper axes and beads, conch shells with designs on them, here is one of those conch shells, and anybody can put in their theories on what the symbolism depicts here, but seems to be a necklace type thing here with another shell depicted maybe. Here we have some sort of uh, plate or ornament with the hand symbolism, and I've talked about the hand symbolism. And here we have a spider in the middle. And remember, we have a big spider down on the Nazca plane. And this symbolism in the middle, I think this just designates the four cardinal points of the Earth. And that has, uh, that's similar to other symbols from around the world. Now here is a pendant. And two figures facing each other with some symbolism being held up. This to me seems like the symbolism of kind of a yin and yang. Now here is a fragment from a shell, and we see a figure here paddling like in a canoe. But is he paddling like a scene from everyday life where he is paddling the river? Or does this come from their afterlife tales where they paddle a celestial river in the afterlife, just like the Egyptians? I ask that question. Now here is a pic of a collection of, they guesstimate, about 3,000 arrowheads. And when later cultures would visit this place and leave offerings to whoever built this place, seems the most common artifact left was arrowheads. And the more specially made, it seems the better an offering they were. And here you see a rather small ornament that was worn, I believe, around the neck this was. And here we have a figure with some serpent symbolism. And here is a bird and bird figurines from... The mound builder culture are very common, but a lot of those birds, if you look at them, they are actually parrots, parrots from Mexico and Central America. Now here are some ornaments that were worn in the hair, or I think actually it's earrings, and these are made of copper. Here is a look at some of the ornamental beads that were found. And I think these are placed maybe over a water jug. I think that's what that is. Here is one of those effigy pipes that I featured in that video last week. And here he is decapitating a victim. Now here are some of the arrowheads that were found at Craig Mound. They're called tribute points here. But these are extremely well made. Pretty fascinating to look at. 
And here is a hafted bird effigy copper axe that was found. And copper was found really throughout this site. Ornaments made of copper, copper axes, and just sheets of copper. And the leaders were buried with copper chest plates, at least in other mound sites. Here is a frog effigy pipe that was found at Spiral Mounds. I will leave a link to this website here, but this just shows some of the tools here. I think these are the co copper axes, copper tools that they made. These people knew how to work metal and smelt copper. Here are some what looks like shovels and more tools. The artifacts here are very fascinating. We have some pictures at least of them from private collections and other places. Here's one of those shells. And where these shells came from, probably the Gulf of Mexico, my best guess. But the artwork on here certainly reminds you of Mesoamerica. There was also death masks found. That seems to be a very Mayan thing. They were found all the way up into Minnesota and Wisconsin and really a lot of places around the ancient United States. But here we have some sort of object that was found. Is this a turtle? Certainly looks like it. Turtle was a very important symbol. It was the place of creation to these native cultures. Here is some copper artifacts that were found. And does this pose have any symbolism? Well, I think it might possibly. But artifacts here were pretty amazing. They were extensive. They were found by not professional archaeologists and they were sold into private collections. And then these seem to make their way across collections even further into time. But that is a look at some of the artifacts. And as far as the timeline, maybe about a thousand years ago, roughly. But this is At Atlas Obscura. I have used them before. Here is one of the shells with a turtle on it, and the turtle obviously important. A look at the Craig Mounds today. And there isn't a lot of pics used in this video because really what exists today is all not that exciting. There is some mounds that are clearly left, but a lot of these have just disintegrated into nothing. But it says, what was once at a center of a prehistoric power is now reduced to 12 earthen mounds from a bend in the Arkansas River, the Spiral people led Mississippian culture over nearly two thirds of what is now the United States. Spiral was the westernmost outpost of the Southwestern ceremonial complex also known as the Southern Death Cult or Buzzard Cult, which includes Cahokia, Moundville in Alabama, and Etowah in Georgia. It is unknown why it was abandoned. It says the Mississippian society shared elaborate rituals, a pictographic writing system, and mounds built from earth around central plazas. Artifacts from across the country have been found at spiral mounds, including copper from the Great Lakes, shell beads, from the Gulf of California and conch shell from the Gulf of Mexico, indicating a vast trade and communication system. Per permanent settlement at Spiral lasted from AD 800 until 1450, when the population suddenly declined and dispersed. And I will also leave this link below, but a name that has come up in a few of these mound builder research videos that I've done is Hernando de Soto. And it says, in 15... 41, when Spanish explorer Hernando de Soto ventured through southeastern Oklahoma with a little less than 300 men, de Soto set out on a quest to find El Dorado or the Gilded One. The phantom El Dorado proved to be elusive, and de Soto, miserable and despair, decided to abandon his quest. He died in June of 1542 on the banks of a great river, mere months after reaching his decision. And it says nearly 400 years later, during the Great Depression, de Soto's quest inspired rumors of a great deposit of Spanish gold buried in southeast Oklahoma, and that is why those men searched the spiral mounds. And if DeSoto would have been searching in the right location for El Dorado, he would have been searching where the Spanish went in the year after they found out about the El Dorado myth. 
Where did they go the year after the El Dorado myth was told to them? They went to a city that was once covered in gold. We don't know it as El Dorado. We know it as Tiwanaku in Bolivia. Well, I think I'm going to call this a video. The Spiral Mounds here in Oklahoma have a fascinating history from many different aspects. Where these people came from, it seems very logical to assume they came from the same group of people that made up the Mayans or were a branch of the Mayans themselves. We have death masks and parrots and symbolism that seems to echo something that came from Mesoamerica. In a nearby mound site, we have something that has jaguar symbolism on it. So where does that come from? But I think answers are becoming more clear. Maybe we have a couple different phases of people we call mound builders. Maybe one coming from three, four thousand years ago and then a more recent one that echoed building patterns of the past. That is just the theory. We have nothing but really questions coming from this time period. These are the spiral mounds in Oklahoma. I have babbled way too long, but just a fascinating history. Seems there were some real jerk offs here in the 1930s trying to get rich and having no regard for historical sacred sites. But we had one figure coming from this time that seemed to put a minor halt to the looting of the mounds in the area. And he's kind of an unsung hero from this time period. If you have uh, regards for sacred sites and sacred artifacts. But one of the most interesting videos I've done on ancient America, the history here is very fascinating. I'm going to get going. It's my birthday and you all have a very nice day.